Hello everyone, and welcome back to our inventory system series in Godot 4. In this video, we will be creating our inventory UI component, which is responsible for dynamically updating the inventory UI based on the current state of the player's inventory. It will listen for changes in the inventory via our inventory updated signal, and then update the UI accordingly. So basically, each time we add or remove an item from our inventory, then this component will update our UI to show new items, increase item quantities, or clear the slots. In your project, let's create a new scene with the control node as its root node. You might be wondering why we are using a control node instead of a canvas layer node, and this is because we use control nodes for their UI-specific functionalities, layout management, and adaptability. Canvas layer nodes are useful for containing or grouping UI-related nodes, so basically acting as a container, whereas control nodes allow us to access the UI functions of these nodes. Rename this node to Inventory UI and save it underneath your Scenes folder. Just like before, let's attach a script to it and save it underneath our Scripts folder. Now, to your control node, let's add a grid container node. The grid container arranges its child nodes in a grid pattern, so when we later on add our slots to our inventory, it will be arranged in a grid. We'll need to give this grid container a number of columns, which are the number of slots that it will have per row. The rows are determined automatically based on the number of children or columns that it has. I'm going to change mine to 9, so for the 30 slots that I have, 9 slots will take up one row so I think I will have four rows. I might be wrong, don't judge me on my math. Now we need to change the size of our grid container to be bigger, so change your x-axis size to 800 and your y-axis size to 400. We'll also need to bring it down a bit, so change your x-axis value to 200 and your y-axis value to 200 on your position property. If you are planning on having a lot more slots than 30 or 40, then you might want to put this grid container in a scroll box so that you can scroll down when you have more than X amount of columns. So this inventory UI menu will be made visible when the player presses their inventory or I key on their keyboard. We want to go back to our player node and add a new canvas layer node, which will contain our inventory UI grid. So in our player scene, add a new canvas layer node and rename it to Inventory UI. To this node, also add a new color rec node. We want to change its anchor preset to be full rec because we want our inventory screen to take up the entire space of our window. We'll also change its color to a dark green. Then we'll add a label node with the text Inventory. We'll then want to center this label node and change its Y position to be 50. Then we'll change its font to be Arcade Classic with a size of 60 pixels. Okay, so let's select our Coloric node that we added to our Canvas Layer node and instance our Inventory UI component. This will make the grid show on the screen when we open or close our inventory. Just like we did with our Interact UI, we will change the visibility of our Inventory UI to be hidden. Now let's create a node reference to our inventory UI in our player script. In our player script, we want to show or hide our inventory UI if the player presses I. So if they press I the first time, it should be made visible, and if they press it the second time, it should be hidden. You'll see that we say inventory UI.visible equals not inventory UI.visible. Now this creates a flip-flop, which will open or close our inventory each time the I key is pressed on our keyboard. We'll also need to pause or unpause our game if the inventory window is shown using this method. So we can pause our game using the getTree.pause method. 
For our player to be able to execute their inputs whilst the game is paused, we'll need to change their processing method to be set to always. This means that the player will always receive input and be able to execute or process whether the game is paused or not. All the other components such as say your enemy or a timer will still be paused, so it won't process or execute, but your player will still be able to accept input and process. Now if you're on your scene and you press I continuously, your inventory menu should show or hide. We don't have any slots yet, so we can't really see our populated grid in action. But for now, let's connect our signal to our inventory UI script and create the base for our functions that will clear or populate our grids with slots. So in your inventory UI script, let's create a new node reference to our grid container. Then let's create a function that will populate or update our inventory UI whenever our inventory updated signal from our global script is emitted. We'll come back to this later on after we've created our slots because we are going to populate it with slots which we don't have. Please note that I put a little underscore in front of the function just to tell myself that this is a connector function. Remember we talked about emitters and connectors? Well this is the function that we will connect to our signal. Now in our ready function we can connect the signal to our created function. We'll also then call the function so that the inventory can update and load with the correct number of columns when our inventory UI node is added to the scene. Just note that when you connect the signal to a function, you don't put in the brackets because we're just calling it by its function name and not the function itself. Now, if we were to create our slots in the future and we added new items to our slot, it will create a whole duplicate of our slots, meaning items will be added into our slots, but our updated values, such as the correct quantity values, might not show correctly. So even though you're adding an apple to an apple stack, the quantity might still show one. Therefore, we need to create a function that will clear all of the children from the grid container so that we can reset the inventory before we add new items. In our script, let's create a new function called clear grid container. In this function, we will iterate through all of the children of the grid container. And for each child in the container, aka each item that is in the slot, we will remove them and free up their memory. This will ultimately clear the entire grid of any items that might have been added to it. So later when we load up our game, we will have nothing but empty slots. For this to work, we'll have to call this function at the beginning of our on inventory updated function. And that is it for our inventory UI for now. We can't really do much without our slots. So in the next video, we will get started on our inventory slot, which is the biggest component of this entire system. The slots will represent each item and it will allow us to not only see the items in our inventory, but also interact with them. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.